Hi, and welcome back to Thor's lab. Today I'll be making some concentrated nitric acid, also called azeotropic nitric acid, using potassium nitrate and sulfuric acid. An azeotrope happens when a mixture of two liquids boil together and at a different temperature than each liquid on its own. In other words, vapor produced from the distillation has the same concentration of the two constituents as the liquid in the boiling flask, so we can't get a higher concentration just by distillation. Nitric acid forms an azeotrope with water at about 68%, and this is the concentration most often found in the lab. This is a very simple reaction. Sulfuric acid donates a proton to the nitrate group, forming nitric acid and potassium bisulfate. Note that the sulfuric acid is diprotic, meaning it has two hydrogens to donate. However, in this reaction, we only want to use one of those protons. This is because potassium bisulfate is way more soluble in water, at about 1.2 kilograms per liter while water only dissolves 240 grams of potassium sulfate per liter. Too much of the potassium sulfate crashing out early in the distillation could trap the gases that we're trying to distill. Plus, it would make it harder to clean up my flask. I'll be using two moles of each reactant, so 202 grams of potassium nitrate and about 120 milliliters of this strain cleaner sulfuric acid. Here I'm assuming that the sulfuric acid is at a concentration of about 92%. Because we'll be making azeotropic nitric acid, I'll have to add a little bit of water to the reaction as the 10 milliliters in the sulfuric acid won't be enough to dilute it to its proper concentration. Since I'll be redistilling later anyway, I'm adding 100 milliliters of water. The water and the potassium nitrate were added to a 500 milliliter round bottom flask, and then the sulfuric acid was added slowly. The contents of the flask then turned orange yellow. This is probably nitrogen dioxide gas already forming from the heat produced by dissolving the sulfuric acid in the water. I washed the neck of the flask with some water to get rid of potassium nitrate that was stuck on the joints. Then I set up for simple distillation. I made sure to attach a hose that led outside, as a lot of nitrogen dioxide gas would be evolved during this reaction. Soon the whole apparatus was filled with brown nitrogen dioxide, which looked pretty cool. Additionally, the potassium nitrate had almost all dissolved, except for a little bit which I think were impurities in the low-grade stump remover powder. When distillate began being collected at about 110 degrees Celsius, the apparatus cleared up a bit. Unfortunately, something went wrong with my thermometer adapter, and it kept loosening itself, which made me freak out a little bit. However, I didn't see any gas leaking, so I just kept tightening it often. Near the end of the distillation, the potassium bisulfate began falling out of solution, and the nitrogen dioxide gas got even darker. I was left with what looked like about 150 mils of yellow distillate and a hard mass of potassium bisulfate crystals in my boiling flask. At this point, I got impatient and decided to show my friend nitric acid dissolving a penny. This will make yield a bit harder to calculate, but I did it anyway. The solution turned a really nice turquoise color after the reaction was done, and I was left with a very thin and sharp zinc penny core. Now it was time to redistill. However, I didn't have another 250 mil receiving flask, and I didn't want to collect in a big 500 mil flask, so I just transferred the contents and washed the flasks. At this point, an order of glassware came in the mail, and I was excited to try it out. So I put oil in my new crystallizing dish and began preheating it for an oil bath. Then I set up for distillation, using a beaker to collect the forerun. Since the apparatus was opened for the beaker, and a tube leading outside wouldn't be effective, I set up a big fan off screen blowing from behind me and out the window. When the temperature reached 118, I swapped the flask. This distillation took a very long time. My tiny Corning PC220 couldn't effectively heat the oil bath in the solution, so I ran to the grocery store to buy more aluminum foil while somebody else watched the distillation. After insulating, the distillation picked up speed. Finally, after nearly two hours, the distillation was complete. Unfortunately, Due to the length of the distillation, the initially clear nitric acid began decomposing to nitrogen dioxide before the distillation was done, so I was left with a yellow liquid rather than a clear one. The concentrated nitric acid was measured to be 121 mils and was stored in a proper container and labeled accordingly. The 121 mils represents a yield of 92%. Again though, I did use about 10 to 20 mils dissolving that penny, so this would bring the yield up to probably about 95%, but it's hard to say. Still though, this is a pretty good yield. We can do a cost analysis and find that it took about $3.13 to make those 121 mils of nitric acid, which gives us a marginal cost of 2.6 cents per milliliter. This is not including electricity, though some might say that I should have included that since the distillation took so long. However, this hot plate consumes only about 250 watts, 
and I had it on for nearly two hours. So we can conservatively say that we used 500 watt hours of energy. At a price of 13 and a half cents per kilowatt hour where I live, that's only about seven cents of electricity used in total, or 1 20th of a cent per milliliter. Thanks for watching, and let me know what you'd like to see next time.